When the Queen appeared on the palace balcony for her jubilee, flanked by her successors, the message was clear. This is the future of the British monarchy. And now she's made an even more symbolic move, allowing her son, the future king, to represent her on a major foreign visit for the first time. I declare before you all that my whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service. On her 21st birthday, the Queen pledged to serve her empire. She's now the symbolic head of 54 Commonwealth countries, so her decision to miss this year's gathering of leaders in Sri Lanka won't have been taken lightly. But Prince Charles has spent a lifetime training for this role. He's never stood in for her before, but in 2007, he accompanied his mother to the Commonwealth meeting in Uganda. The Queen's advancing age and frailty is behind the decision. She's 87 years old and in March was admitted to hospital for the first time in a decade, suffering from gastroenteritis. The Duke of Edinburgh was forced to attend the annual Commonwealth Day service at Westminster Abbey alone as the Queen recovered. But despite her illness, she did manage to attend a reception later that evening to sign the Commonwealth's historic charter. This time, though, the palace isn't taking any chances, announcing it's reviewing the amount of long-distance travel she undertakes. It's quite a significant move. Given that the Queen is 87, one shouldn't look anything sinister into this, but given that she is 87, it's a natural transition. And while the Prince of Wales is not guaranteed to become the next head of the Commonwealth at the end of this reign, there seems to be a consensus within the Commonwealth that perhaps she should be. It will be the first time the Queen's missed the meeting in more than 40 years. For the future king, this will be one of his most significant duties to date.